In the early days of React development, writing code with class components was like working on an old, reliable typewriter. It got the job done, but it wasn't exactly smooth. Managing state, dealing with side effects, and keeping track of lifecycle methods felt like carefully pressing each key, hoping you wouldn't jam the machine. As your projects grew, it started to feel like you were typing out a novel on that typewriter. Every new feature was another chapter, and the more you wrote, the more you had to wrestle with the mechanics. Fixing bugs or adding new functionality often meant going back and retyping entire sections, which could be frustrating and time-consuming. Developers began to wish for something more efficient, something that would let them focus on the story they were telling, not the tool they were using to tell it. Then along came React hooks, like upgrading to a sleek, modern laptop. Suddenly, the process was streamlined. With hooks like use state and use effect, you could manage state and side effects directly in functional components, typing out your code with ease. Like for example, imagine you want to build a simple counter app. With class components, it would have been like using that old typewriter. Setting up state, managing updates, and handling events all required careful coordination. But with hooks, it's as simple as writing a few lines of code. For example, use state is like having a built-in counter right on your laptop's keyboard. You don't need to worry about manually managing the state with separate methods and properties. Just call use state to create a state variable and use set count to update it. The result? A clean and intuitive way to manage your application's state. You will certainly use the use state hook in most of your React apps. The use state hook in React is a fundamental tool for managing state in functional components. It allows you to add state variables to your components, which can then be updated and used to render dynamic content. The use state hook has three parts. The state, which holds the current value, set state, which is a function used to update the state, and the initial value, which is the value when the component is first rendered. You'll often find use state handy when building forms, where you need to keep track of user input for tasks like search suggestions, filtering tables, and more. It's also great for conditional rendering, such as toggling between two states, like showing or hiding content with a button, or imagine displaying different content based on whether a user is logged in or not. With use state, managing these dynamic scenarios becomes straightforward and efficient. The use state hooks initial value isn't limited to just Booleans or primitive types like strings or integers. It can also be an array. For instance, when building an e-commerce app, you might use useState to manage a shopping cart. In this scenario, useState helps track the items in the cart and updates the list as you add or remove items. You can even use objects to represent and manipulate the cart's contents effectively. But there's a problem. As your app grows, for example, you added a function which remove item to the cart. Add a state that manage for the total quantity of items and the total price of items. Managing many states can become cumbersome. You can just imagine how challenging on the app when your component's state grows in complexity. But luckily, React has a solution for that. Introducing Use Reducer. Use Reducer is a React hook used for managing complex state logic and functional components. It's an alternative to use state that is particularly useful when dealing with state that has multiple sub-values or when the state updates depend on complex conditions. Let's revisit the shopping cart example and see how we can use use reducer to simplify our app. For now, let's remove all the use state hooks and associated logic. Just like use state, use reducer also requires an initial state. In our case, this includes the cart, which starts as an empty array and both the total quantity and total price, which are initially set to zero. To define a reducer function, you need to create a function named reducer. This function takes two parameters, the state and action. The state parameter represents the current state, while action is an object that describes the operation to be performed. For example, to handle adding and removing items, you can use a switch statement within the reducer function to specify how the state should be updated based on different action types. By doing this, we can now update all the necessary states in one place reducing the complexity of the app. We can also use the spread operator with the state to update only the parts that need changing. Then next, we'll add functionality for the cart, total quantity, and total price. But you might be wondering, what is this payload doing here? In the context of React's use reducer function, an action in a reducer typically has two main parts. The type, which is the string that describes the type of action being performed like the add item and remove item. The type tells the reducer how to interpret the action. On the other hand, payload refers to an object that carries any additional data the reducer needs to perform the action. We'll get a clearer picture later once we apply the function we wrote earlier. Inside your component, such as the shopping cart, you can call useReducer, similarly to how you call useState. However, instead of using setState, you'll use the term dispatch to send actions to the reducer. Inside useReducer, we first provide our reducer function and the initial state we created. And next, we'll just create an arrow function to handle adding items. This function will take item and price as arguments, which we'll use later. 
Within this function, we'll use the dispatch function we set up earlier. We'll just specify the action type we want to call. In this case, it's the add item. But what about the specific item name and price? That's where the payload comes in. We use payload to pass additional data, like the item and price. Inside the dispatch function, we include payload and provide the arguments for the item and price. The same principle applies also when removing an item. Then, we just need to complete the rest of the logic by adding buttons for specific items, mapping through the card array and adding a button to remove items based on their index. And finally, we'll just need to display the total quantity and total price. To keep our code even cleaner and more organized, we can also move the initial state and reducer function to a separate file and import it as needed. By doing this, we can keep the component files focused on rendering and logic. While state management logic resides in its own file, makes it easier to navigate and understand each part of the application. Plus, when the state management is in its own file, we can reuse it across different components without duplicating code. This setup also helps us avoid mistakes and makes updates easier since all the state management logic is in one place. It's a neat way to keep our code organized and efficient. When comparing use state to use reducer, the difference might seem subtle in simpler cases. However, as we build more complex applications, such as a shopping cart that handles forms, API calls, and multiple state variables, the advantages of using the use reducer hook become more apparent in terms of organization and maintainability. We can clearly see how use reducer organizes the code in a much cleaner, more readable, and sustainable way. All in all, we can use use state for simpler components where state management is straightforward and doesn't involve complex logic or multiple state variables. However, as your application grows and state management becomes more intricate, use reducer steps in as the unsung hero. But managing state locally in React is just one approach. There is also a way to manage state globally. Local state management, such as use state and use reducer, is confined to a specific component or a small set of related components. On the other hand, Global state management, such as the Redux library, is beneficial when you need to share state across the entire application or large parts of it. This is especially useful for components that share data like user authentication status, application settings, or global notifications. Since you've already learned the use reducer hook, picking up Redux will be easier for you. It follows a similar pattern with actions and dispatch. To really understand how Redux works, stay tuned for our Redux tutorial, where we'll dive deeper into managing global state. This is just the first part of mastering React hooks in an easy way. We will still discuss use effect, use context, use ref, and more in future videos. So subscribe to stay tuned for that. And I know we covered a lot of concepts, which is why we've created a PDF version of this video. It's free, but we would appreciate any support you can give to the channel. You can also leave a comment below to suggest any topics you'd like us to discuss in the future. Well, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.